I started a series uh, about a year ago, a year and a half ago, and the idea came about because I kept thinking of getting from one point to another, uh, such as in traveling, using the metaphor from getting from point A to point B. And I thought of fantastical sort of vehicles for some of my uh, characters to travel in. Well, here the two figures are traveling. You're not sure if it's water, if, it, if they're in the air. They're not really grounded in something, but there's a tree coming out of the uh, out of the boat, the boat-shaped figure, you know. So I'm not quite sure. I think they're almost like looking for the place that they're going to, and I I kind of like when people make up their own stories about some of the imagery that I do, because I don't really like to tell the whole story, because I, I really don't know what the whole story is myself. <laughs> get a good feeling for something then I just go with it I run with it and I get a little obsessive I think a lot of artists are a little obsessive or a lot some people are more than others but uh, I don't know I mean I like what I do one of the things I like about what I do being independent is getting to sort of somehow sometimes pick and choose like the kind of projects you want to work on which is like so much fun and then you say well okay but man gotta get paid for some of this stuff, you know? I mean, I make it work, but it could be better. The economy is pretty bad right now, so it's a little tough. But I wouldn't give this up, even if I do end up working in a factory or, I don't know, you know, <laughs> a store, I don't know. I was born in Mexico and raised here. and um, It was really important for me to have art as I grew up. Um, we had art in the schools, but I also grew up in Pilsen and there was a tremendous amount of art activity, which is still true today, more so than ever, but I remember meeting a lot of the, um, the, the muralists at the time, um, people like Marcos Raya, Ray Patlan, um, younger generations later on, Jaime Langoria, you know, Sal Vega, Roberto Valadez, and, and much later on, Hector Duarte. And those people made a huge impact in my life. From there, we lived like at the edge of Chinatown, like 26th Street. Mm -hmm. So it was like rich, poor Chinatown. And when we were little kids, they used to ask us if we were Chinese. And we're like, no, you know. We, then the Chinese kids would speak Chinese to us. And we're like, we're not Chinese. Because <laughs> <laughs> we look a little, my sister really looked Chinese, you know. And then um, we actually lived in the Italian part of Bridgeport. That was rough because it was like a lot of racism. Yeah, I The Italians hated us. They hated the African Americans. Mm -hmm. They hated us. Oh my God, we used to get beat up every day. I remember mm -hmm. running home from school because Italian kids would be throwing stuff at us, you know? Did you talk this the 60s? Early this 60s? is in the very early 60s, oh. yeah. And um, um, this is like uh, 60, I don't know, 60, 60, 61, 62, 63, you that know? That must have been pretty wild. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, Mayor Daly's neighborhood was just on the other yeah, side, yeah. the Irish, so it was, if we went to the Irish part, we got beat up. We went to the Italian side, we got beat up, like, you know, <laughs> and I graduated high school when I was 17, and I went straight to college. I was the first in my family to ever go to college, and I went to University of Illinois. I was applying to schools out east, my parents would not let me go away to school, they were like, no, oh, you can't do that. And here I was like trying to apply to schools like Brandeis and you know, I was really trying to get out of, out away from the family, yeah. that kind of thing. And I did actually, I did, even though I moved out of my apartment, out of my house, my parents' how, house. How was that? How did they take you moving out? My dad thought it was horrible for me to move out of the house, you know, that I was going to be a wild girl, you know. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, once you leave the house, that's it, you're lost, you yeah. know. <laughs> I think it might still be that way for some kids, some families. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but, you know, they were very cool. I mean, at the end, they saw that, you know, they were, um, you know, they, they were supportive. At first, they were just, like, freaking out on us because we were just, like, first of all, I joined the anti-war movement. That was, like, a real big deal. My brother and I wore black armbands to the moratorium, you know, and we got kicked out of school because we were organizing against the war. And, 
my dad was like, he was a little progressive, but he just thought it was the communists were involved, so we were going to be all going to jail or something. We used to have meetings in my dad's basement, and my, this, and my dad found out he'd kill us, you know, under the pretense that we were in a band, but really we were all doing politicking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a lot of people in Pilsen involved in the anti-war movement, not as probably as much as in other areas, but uh, there, there were quite a bit of people. Um, the Chicano movement was, I participated in that even though I never really called myself a Chicana, but I thought it was really important and that was what I knew. So I was very supportive and I became very involved, very active in that. My mom was an activist, so she was real progressive and activist. My dad, he worked a lot and he was just like, I think, really frustrated, you know. I didn't want to have to do anything with anything else but yeah. come home and have dinner and don't bother me, that kind of thing. Yeah. And when I graduated from college, my parents moved back to Mexico. So when I graduated, they flew down for my graduation. And it was great, you know, it was just great to, to have everybody around. And my dad was just so proud, you know, because it's really important, you know, especially when you don't have a lot of people in your family actually go to university, you know. That's like really something. You know, now they feel like, oh, our kids are going to be better than us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, it's important. It's really important, especially for poor working class people. They, you know, get to college is a big deal. Yeah. And to finish, it's even a bigger deal.